Hello everyone, welcome back. From this tutorial onwards, we are going to do some serious programming and we will use Eclipse IDE for writing our programs. In our previous tutorials, you have learned how to set up Eclipse IDE. I hope you have set up Eclipse IDE and installed Java on your local machine. So in this tutorial, we are going to understand first of all, what are Java packages. We have discussed this in brief in our previous tutorial, but in this tutorial, we are going to go a little bit deep into packages. Then we will understand the main theme of this tutorial, how do we take input from users. So far, we have been assigning the values directly to variables. However, wouldn't it be good if we ask user to input some values so that we, our program acts on them. In order to understand how to take input from user, streams and scanner will be utilities that we will be going to use. So let's get started. First of all, we will create a sample project in Eclipse. You go to File, New, Java Project and let's say I call my project Sample Project. You will see that this project is created with just one directory known as source. I would like to show you here your so sample project has one dot project file, one dot class path file and one dot settings folder. These three things are particularly for Eclipse projects. So you can ignore them. Then you have a source folder in which we will be creating our source code. Once that code is compiled, you will see the output in bin directory. Right now both are empty. Now I come back to Eclipse. On the source folder, I right click and I add a package. Note that packages are used in Java in order to prevent the naming conflicts or to control the searching or location of various kind of classes. You can understand package as some kind of grouping of related classes. And the naming convention of package is such that if my company's name is www.amazon.com then I would try to keep my package name as reverse of the that string like com.amazon something. For example, here I can write com.training.java. It is just a convention, but people mostly use that. com.companyname. and then you add your further specifications. So note that after writing com.training.java, when I click finish, a package gets created here. And inside package, I can right click and I can create a simple class. Let's say I call my project sample class. And then in sample class, if I type main and I press control space, Eclipse shows that I think you need public static void main string ARJS. I just press enter and Eclipse IDE is helping me out by writing that code for me. And then here I want to write system.out.println hello world. So I write this out. Again I, sp I press control space and Eclipse helps me by completing that to system.out.println. Here I write hello world right and I save the program by pressing Control S. When I click on run on this toolbar you will see that the output appears in console window at bottom of the Eclipse. Now let's do some analysis in our folder structure. So what package name did we create? com.training.java So when I go inside source I see a folder com then I see a folder training, then I see a folder java and then I see the class 
sample class dot java got it and then when you compiled it then inside bin folder you will see the similar hierarchy com training java sample class dot class that means when that class was compiled when the java file was compiled we got a dot class file in the similar folder structure that is defined by the package i hope this is clear now let's move on to understanding streams guys okay, streams are simply objects that represent source or destination of data in java either we take input from some source or we put data to some destination most of most often when you are writing simple programs or you are participating in competitive com uh, programming competitions you will read input from console in such scenarios system dot in becomes the de facto input input channel and this represents the ordered sequence of bytes in uh, in java we essentially have three main streams which are initialized by the java runtime when the jvm starts up so you don't have to instantiate any of these streams yourself you can expect them to be available system dot in is the input stream which is typically connected to keyboard input so whatever you type from the keyboard that to that input in the form of tokens comes via system dot in system dot out is the print stream where system dot out normally outputs the data to the console now system dot err is a interesting stream which is similar to system dot out except that it is used to output the error text some of the ides like eclipse will show the out will will show the output sent to system dot err in red text to make it more obvious that this is an error right now let's write some example so i come back to this this place and here i want to use some stream so input stream is a class provided by java and after i write eclipse says that it doesn't recognize this class so i press control space eclipse shows me that you can import stream input stream so i press enter and you will observe that import java io dot in input stream package gets imported once a package gets imported you can use the classes in that package so i write input stream input is equal to new let's say i have a file uh in my sample project i have a file called in which i have written a b c d e and i save it as i inside my sample project i save this as uh, hello.txt now what i want is i want to read this file hello.txt i would like to import file input stream also and now you will observe that eclipse still shows an error that what if this file doesn't exist i want to show the error or throw an exception whenever i am not able to do something so we will just hover on this and eclipse will show us that you can throw out error in case something is having a problem i add throws file not found exception note that we will learn about exceptions different type of exceptions and how to handle them in detail in separate tutorial for now just assume that we are trying to read a file using input stream right now if i write system dot 
out dot println file opened now let's run this program we will find that this our program prints hello world and file opened because this file was found if this file was not found instead of hello if I write world.txt which is a file which I don't have then in that scenario it will throw an exception file not found exception it says that world.txt is not found same way if I may if I put it back to hello.txt and instead of system.out.println if I write system.err that is error dot println then let's see what happens you will see that anything which is written to error stream is written in red color so as to tell you that something is wrong I hope this clarifies the basic idea of system.err error stream and now let's go back to our main theme of the project how do we read the input in order to read the input we are going to use a special utility class called scanner now scanner is a very interesting class which breaks the input into tokens using a delimiter so what happens is from this input stream whatever input is coming it is broken into token the tokens are separated to each other by the default delimiter which is white space you can change the delimiter if you want by using the delimiter function so let's get started what I will do is I will create a scanner I create a scanner instance I pass it system.in I am trying to say that create a scanner object by reading the input from system.in once you have this you can start reading it for example read the name so I write enter your name and once someone will enter the name I want to read it out I can say string name is equal to scanner dot scanner dot next and then I can say your name is name so let's execute this on console you will see enter your name I enter my name and it prints out back your name is Deepak now if you want to enter something else like enter your age instead of next you can have int age is equal to scanner dot next int that means I'm expecting the next token to be passed and read as integer you will have similar functions for all the primitive data types you will have next int you have you will have next byte next short next and so on here I am showing you next int so then I can write your ages fine let's execute this program again your age is 30 years right now let's come back apart from next you have functions like next line which returns the next line as a string you also have functions like next byte 
which returns the next token as byte. You also have next integer, next short and so on. I would encourage you to open up your IDE or your notepad and start writing some programs in Java which takes input from user. One of the simple programs that I would suggest you to try is take two numbers from user and add them and print the result. So in this tutorial we learned about packages, how they define the hierarchy of classes and the output, output binary folder. We also learned how to use the scanner to read the input. We also realized that streams are of three types system.out, system.in and system.err. These three streams are in instantiated or initialized by your Java virtual machine, Java runtime and the JVM starts up. And you don't have to instantiate any of these streams yourself but you can just use them. And that was it for this tutorial. Stay tuned. Thank you.